Today, I want to talk about one of my favorite things to add to my wardrobe, and that is shoes. I've said this so many times before, but accessories have this truly transformative power when you put them on. And just switching your shoes, your bag, the way you've done your hair, your jewelry, that can completely change the way that an outfit feels on. And I think it's why I put so much emphasis on this particular part of my wardrobe. So I thought more specifically, we could talk about 2023 shoe trends and thought I'd just run through my thoughts, which ones I think are going to have a little bit more of a classic or timeless appeal and whether or not I will personally be delving into them or if I've already got them in my closet. So I want to start with the first one and it is platforms. I've seen that platforms are continuing to be a shoe trend for 2023. And if you watched a video that I filmed last year, I mentioned trends that I was going to be avoiding. Platforms is one of them. And there's a few reasons why. One, I already did platforms when I was in my early 20s. And I have to say they are not the most practical or even the safest shoe to walk in. The ones I owned were incredibly high and I constantly was buckling my ankles and I'm actually amazed that I didn't break my ankle or have a really nasty fall. The second being, I don't need the additional height. I'm 172 centimeters tall, so I'm tall enough. Um, and the third being that they're just really not that practical for my lifestyle and actually aesthetically these days, I find that they're not something I particularly enjoy. I can appreciate them from afar. And I think in the drama and in the spectacle of a fashion show, I think they have their place. But from a day-to-day -day perspective, I'm incredibly pragmatic, practical, and I want my clothing to actually serve a purpose or a function in some way while still having this element of beauty. And they don't really fit that mold for me. I think if you love a platform, particularly if you're petite, this might be a trend for you, but it's just not one that I'm personally going to be considering for my own wardrobe. Okay, next we have the knee-high boots, and this is actually one I'm really excited about. And I started to find myself especially drawn to it during the second half of 2022. My friend Jess Alitzi, she has the Dear Francis knee-high boots, and she was wearing them with absolutely everything, and they just looked incredibly chic and very effortless and I don't know something something about it I really like it I think also they are practical if you live in a colder climate during the winter months it's a way that you have an additional layer on your legs uh, they're great for layering underneath trousers as well especially the wider leg trousers if you have something that is a little bit more of a slimmer fit in the shaft. Uh, so I do have two pairs of knee-high boots now. Uh, both of them are more of a slim fitting style. So I have the Vivaya ones because I worked with them last year and it was a style that I was really excited to add to my wardrobe. They have a little low heel. And then more recently, I decided to finally splurge on a pair from Arquette. I do have them here just so I can show you. They are these leather stretch western style boots with the squared off toe and they have the cuban heel these are incredibly incredibly comfortable and to me they felt like a great more, slightly more affordable but still very high quality alternative to the tibby bronson boots so i think with a shoe like this there's loads of styling potential you can wear them even with an evening dress evening gown uh, if you wanted to kind of bring things down a notch especially with something that is a little bit wider. I think some of the brands that come to mind, like Paris, Texas, they have a really cool mock croc one, Dare France, as I mentioned earlier, but I will make sure to link a whole bunch of different alternatives, definitely one I'm loving. And I think this is that return to the 90s that I can really, really get on board with. And it actually is something I have a soft spot for because my mum loved knee-high boots. And this particular trend really just makes me think of her. Okay, kitten heels. Again, one I am really on board with, and it's all to do with that functionality. I think many of us have fatigued of the concept or idea of wearing a 10 centimeter high heel. It is not really all that practical, and they can be difficult to walk in, they can be uncomfortable, and for many of us, our lifestyles have changed over the past few years. We're working from home a lot more, so something that does give us a little bit of visual height that might feel a little bit dressier and a little bit more formal, but that is still really walkable, I think is brilliant. And I have bought into this trend. I have the Gucci embellished, these are the Supreme 
kitten heels. I love these. I think they're a bit of fun and again a return to the 90s and one that I'm really loving. I think they look beautiful with slip skirts, slip dresses, with jeans. Very easy to style, almost in the same way that you would sort of a pointed toe flat. And there seem to be a lot of different versions of these, even in boots as well. I've seen brands like The Row, Senso, loads of variety here. And while I do think that this is probably one that after a few seasons of the fashion cycle may sort of find its way going out again as we prefer or gravitate towards more of a mid heel or a higher heel I think if you love this style it's something worth maybe buying and then keeping in your closet for years and years and just reaching for it wear what you love is my personal opinion our right, next one is the chunky boot or the heavy boot and this feels like again a continuation of that lug sole boot trend that we saw in 2022 2021 Bottega really leading the charge with this with those really thick tread boots which were all the rage even the row have that particular style the zipper up the center really actually quite practical they do give you a little bit of height they almost sort of uh, inching in towards platform territory if this is a way that you could maybe wear that trend if you liked it if you, if you consider the two interchangeable um, but yeah for me I think it's a good way to have an item in your wardrobe which functions and serves a very specific purpose but is also a really great styling tool when you think about balance and proportion in your outfits uh, especially with these sort of more fluid draped trousers something that I personally really like to do is ground that with a chunkier shoe something that is a little bit more solid and has a bit more weight as opposed to necessarily something that's more dainty there's a time and a place for both but I really like the way that something that is a bit wider through the leg looks with a chunky shoe so I also like it from a styling perspective as well and I think they can really differ in terms of how weighty and heavy they are to wear on the foot you can get some that are like featherweight <laughs> oh and you have to mind the lighting it is a little bit cloudy today uh, the next trend is the embellished shoe so I'm talking rhinestones mesh I think those Mac and Mac heels are really one of the shoes that for me feel like the beginning of this particular trend those are ultra feminine very very girly uh, but now you're seeing styles that are a little bit chunkier a little bit kind of cooler and edgier with a shiny mesh over them like boots and things which are really quite neat and while I probably wouldn't be opting for a boot version of that I do kind of like I guess I have dipped my toe in a little bit with these Gucci heels because they have the crystal embellished all over them and it's a nice way to add a little bit of glitz and glamour into your outfits especially if your style tends to lean a little bit more casual at least that's the way that I'm personally looking at it uh, so this is one I'm 50 50 on it really depends on the style I think styles that uh, feel a little bit more classic that have it in more of a subtle subdued way are ones that I really like uh, but all over embellishment I think can be a little bit too loud for me personally. I think if you're going out all the time, you tend to wear quite simple dresses and you want your shoes to be the statement maker, they're going to be the hero of your outfit, then absolutely. And I think this is something we're probably going to see quite a lot over fashion month. Next trend is Perspex heels. And this is another one I won't be participating in. It's not something that feels like it's got longevity to me. I think it's going to be one that sort of lasts one or two fashion cycles. And when I am adding things to my wardrobe where I do want to participate or lean into something that is a bit trendier, I am thinking about whether or not I'm going to be wearing it, you know, for a good five years or so. That's kind of what I'm looking at because then I know it is going to be truly refreshing of my personal style. Now this trend actually reminds me a lot of the Maison Margiela collaboration with H&M. If you remember this, you recall that there was a black boot that had a Perspex heel. And I think maybe Acne Studios might have done something that was very similar. Uh, maybe I'm interchanging the two, but in my mind that is the collaboration and these were like such a hot ticket piece at the time. It looked like you were on tiptoes floating in the air, which is really quite kind of cool. It is a bit of a fashion statement, a fashion moment. I think there's a really interesting way to pull this off rather than just having a standard chunky heel that is made out of perspex but we're also seeing it in the straps and also those kind of clear see-through trans 
transparent elements coming through in the rest of the shoe design and not just in the heels. But I thought this is really neat and we're seeing it at Bottega, at Dries. I, but yeah, I think it's fun, but just not one that is for me this time around. Kind of continuing on that same vein are uh, sculptural heels and this is one I'm seeing so much and again one that I think is such a strong statement when it comes to footwear. Those square block heels from the Attica are probably the ones that first come to mind as kind of kicking this off but we're seeing more interesting shapes like cylindrical shapes as part of the heel. Uh, Dries Van Noten did a really interesting one which is actually a gold contrast that has sort of a squiggly effect to it. Rick Owens are also doing this with the cutout which again this is something that I feel goes back to their roots from sort of over a decade ago. I think we're in this period where people want to really show a bit more personality in what they're wearing as opposed to necessarily always opting for neutrals and I really love that because style is an expression of self. Again, probably not one that I'm going to be looking to incorporate into my own wardrobe just because I am thinking about longevity and this is one that I think is more of a moment for right now but that might kind of cycle away in sort of six to 12 months time. Final two pair of shoes really lean in on classic styles that you probably already own in your closet. The first being ballet flats. And I feel like Miu Miu has created this resurgence or this trend toward ballet core. Their ballet flats with the elasticated straps across the foot being the ones that really come to mind as having a very strong image and presence around this trend. Simone Rocha is another brand which does this sort of ballet style very well. And I also think the Margiela Tabby Flats in the ballet flat style, they sort of lean into this trend as well. But loads of brands are doing them. I mean, the Chanel ballet flats and the two-tone are iconic. For something that's a little bit more affordable, Evelyn were doing a style, I think last year when this whole trend sort of started to come to the fore, but I feel like it's really beginning to reach its peak now in 2023. The difference being the way that it's being styled. So with a lot of more lower slung jeans, stuff that are really kind of wide and baggy and that you wouldn't necessarily typically think to pair with a ballet flat. As I said earlier, I do like to kind of ground those sorts of trousers with something that has a little bit more weight to it or that actually fits a little bit wider across the foot. So it's not a pairing I would personally go to or at least necessarily think to go to, but it is an interesting pairing and sometimes that friction can be something that really makes an outfit feel more unique or give it more personality. So I thought that was really fun. And then the last one is loafers and we're seeing this real return to loafers, but with a bit of an updated twist, whether they've got more of a chunky heel, they've got chain embellishment to them, they um, come up the vamp quite high. Prada, I think those Prada loafers with the metal bar across them was one of those styles we saw a lot of initially and we've really seen those high-end brands kind of leaning in on that and this of course filters down to the high street and the styles that perhaps you and I are wearing that are on the more affordable end of the spectrum but still good quality. So that was the final shoe trend I wanted to mention. I am really curious to know whether you will be participating in any of these shoe trends, whether they're shoes you're already wearing, if there's any other particular styles that you feel are having a real big resurgence for 2023, please tell me down in the comment section below. As I mentioned earlier, I will be sure to link all the shoes I featured down in the description box below, but thank you so much for watching, spending some of your day with me, and if you want to see more videos like this from me, more styling videos, then I would love for you to subscribe. I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.